Hello, it's Marie here, and today we're going to be creating minimalist portraits based off a photo reference. Right now, we're looking at the work of Hans Holbein, a German painter who is also known for his sketch portraits. In these sketches, he used barely any shading and barely any color, only putting them in some places. However, he uses these very dark, precise lines to outline the facial features. For your project today, you're going to be mimicking his style while you practice drawing portraits. The first thing you want to do is find a photo reference of someone you know, like a family or a friend. I decided to go with a picture of the actor Keanu Reeves, which I'm going to keep on the screen so you can see what I'm looking at as I draw. As always, you're going to start with a large silhouette before you get into any details. I start with an outline of his hair and shoulders, and then after that I go in and mark where his face is. When drawing a portrait, you always want to mark the vertical and horizontal center lines. The vertical line has the nose and mouth on it, and the horizontal line has the eyes. Remember that the horizontal line will always be in the middle of the head. It's a common mistake to place the horizontal line above the middle. That's because our hairline usually makes our face seem smaller than our overall head. But if you look at the overall shape of the head, then the eyes are exactly in the middle. If the person you're drawing is slightly turned away from you, remember that the vertical line will curve with the head. In terms of proportions, the bottom of the nose will be in the middle of the eyes and the chin, and the mouth is in between the nose and the chin, but always slightly closer to the nose. To help you figure out the spacing between the eyes, remember that our two eyes are about an eye apart, and our nose is typically as wide as the gap between your eyes. If the facial expression of your person is pretty relaxed, then the endpoints of the mouth will be directly under the center of each eye. Especially at the beginning, be careful not to become too focused on one specific detail. When you start focusing on one tiny aspect of the face, then the proportions all start to fall apart. So before you get into any details, constantly look at the face as a whole and make sure everything looks like it does in the picture. Start from simple shapes and work your way up to detail. My eyes started out as vague almond or triangle shapes, but as it became more refined, only then I started to add the eyelids or the irises. Marking the general shape of the eyebrows will also help you figure out the size and shape of the eyes, but I'm also comparing the size of the eyes to all the other facial features simultaneously, making sure that it's all proportional. Put special care into the shape of the eyes and the size of the iris because that's a really important part of capturing someone's likeness. When it comes to the mouth, it's easiest to mark the general position of it and then draw the line in between the lips rather than starting with the shape of the lips. Now that I'm happy with the position and the shape of all my facial features, I'm going in with more details and drawing the facial hair. You don't have to put a lot of detail into the clothes today, just draw some outlines and maybe add a few wrinkles. Our main focus today is on facial proportions, but you should still do some light shading with your pencil. When you're filling in the irises, remember to always leave a little highlight in the eye. It shows that the eyes are glossy and brings life to your person. Similar to what Hans Holbein does in his sketches, and marking some really dark lines on the defining parts of the face. This includes the eyes and the eyelids, the eyebrows, the nostrils and the edge of the nose, as well as the mouth. Still shading with my graphite pencil, I'm now going into the facial hair, and I'm mostly just doing some dark accents and filling the rest in with one tone. I'm going to go in with a colored pencil later and make it darker and more textured. You also don't have to go into much detail with the hair, just add some accents here and there. So I have a graphite drawing with some light shading, and now I'm going in with colored pencils. This isn't going to be a fully fleshed out color drawing, just maybe choose a couple colors that you want to use. I'm using a really dark brown for the hair, and I'm going over all the hair shading, and then later I'll be using a slight pinkish orange with the skin tone. You should also color in the eye. Now I'm going to give the skin some color. I'm using this pinkish orange and I'm pressing very lightly with it to add some shadow and some life to his face. When it comes to the color and the shading, I'm not trying to match the picture perfectly anymore. 
I'm just trying to give a better idea of the shape of his face and some of its textures like wrinkles or shine. Layering the colored pencil over graphite will also create a nice shadow. Once I feel like the piece is almost done, I take a step back from it and look at it as a whole. I notice that I want to fix something such as the hairline, I want to make the hair a little bit more messy, and I want to fill in the color on the beard. I make the darkest parts of the face even darker, and then I'm finished. Now it's your turn.